hello everyone and thanks for introduction. So in this talk, I'm gonna talk about cryptanalysis of low MC for some special instances. This is the outline of the presentation. First, I'll introduce low MC and our motivation and also the previous works. Then uh, I'll present our new technique and after that, uh, uh, I discuss how the purpose method can be uh, utilized to recover the key. And finally, I conclude. So as we know, for most of the applications, standard ciphers like AES, AES are suitable and efficient. But, but uh, for a range of new applications, uh, these ciphers are suboptimal. Actually, in these applications, uh, nonlinear operations are, uh, cost much more than linear operations. Uh, for example, we can mention some applications like multi-party computation, uh, fully homomorphic encryption, zero knowledge proof like uh, SNARK and STAR, and very recently some quantum resistant uh, signatures. So the main goal of the primitive we shall use in this application is to minimize the number of ants and the multiplications. Uh, example of such uh, designs uh, includes low MC, Crivium, Plate, MIMC, and very recently Rasta, which was proposed at uh, last crypto. Low MC uh, was uh, proposed as EURCAP 2015, and uh, actually it uh, creates a suitable instances for a wide range of uh, applications. Uh, for example, two submissions in the second round of uh, NIST uh, competition for post-quantum uh, cryptography uh, use uh, low MC as uh, uh, their uh, primitive. The run function is uh, uh, SPN, but a bit uh, uh, tweaked. Uh, the designers uh, choose to use uh, partial nonlinear layer. It means that the nonlinear layer doesn't apply on the whole state. It only uh, applies on the partial uh, of the state. And uh, also, the SPOX size is uh, as small as possible. It's uh, three bit SPOX and with uh, algebraic degree two. And these choices, uh, of course, uh, can make uh, the cipher vulnerable against statistical uh, attacks. So to provide uh, reasonable security against statistical, uh, statistical cryptanalysis, designers choose a linear uh, layer as invertible, binary invertible matrices that are uh, generated uh, independently and also randomly. Uh, and uh, at the end of the uh, at the end of the uh, round, we also have key addition, where uh, round keys are generated by another uh, matrices. The uh, binary matrices are multiplied to the uh, master key, and then sub keys are generated. Uh, and uh, with, with uh, respect to the number of rounds, the number of rounds provided by the designers uh, in, the, in their uh, work, they study a lot of uh, uh, techniques and different uh, cryptanalysis and based on the given block size and also allowable data complexity and number of SPOXs per round, uh, where we show by M, they, uh, have, they present uh, formulation for the number of rounds and uh, they show that uh, if we consider this amount of rounds, then the cipher is secure against uh, uh, this kind of uh, cryptanalysis. Uh, during uh, the process of the, the designing of Bravitovich and uh, Lowend, uh, propose uh, some uh, update for the uh, formalization to, uh, for formula for uh, computing the number of rounds to be secure against boomerang attack. And uh, at uh, Euridcrypt 2016, uh, we had uh, another paper on higher order differential, which uh, led to the second version of the formula for the number of rounds. And uh, in this work, uh, we present new cryptanalysis for some special instances of LUMC, which led to the new formula for the number of rounds. And uh, it's important uh, to note that uh, LUMC uh, version three uh, 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 is uh, actually uh, utilized in different uh, schemes, for example, uh, signature scheme picnic or uh, some group signature scheme uh, uh, proposed by uh, Dan Bonnet and others. They use low MC, so it's uh, widely used uh, in different applications. 
Uh, our work is inspired by previous uh, techniques, so let me remind uh, the basic uh, idea from the previous works uh, uh, rapidly. Meat in the middle uh, cryptanalysis is a well-known cryptanalysis that at least in the basic uh, scenario, it requires a very limited number of uh, data and also actually it uh, only, it, it, it's independent of the in inner components. It's somehow it's a, a structure of uh, attack. However, it's not applicable on Cypher like uh, LoMC because uh, the, the key schedule uh, is strong enough and the sub key and round keys are generated based on the whole key. Another attack is differential cryptanalysis. It's a flexible, is a is a flexible uh, method that can be applied on a variety of uh, ciphers. Uh, but uh, designers of uh, LoMC they provide a lower bound for the active uh, boxes, and then differential cryptanalysis is not applicable on the cipher. Another idea, which was uh, proposed by Dimitri and Selkov in 2009 to apply an AES. Uh, was the kind of combination of truncated differential method and meet in the middle of method. In truncated differential, instead of looking just one input uh, pair and uh, output uh, difference, input difference and output difference, we can see the set of input differences and set of output differences. Uh, however, they combine these uh, ideas to somehow uh, make uh, take advantage of uh, the positive properties of uh, both attacks. However, uh, the application of this kind of uh, method uh, is challenging on LoMC because the linear layer of LoMC is very strong. It's a bit-oriented uh, matrix, and uh, you cannot find really an efficient uh, truncated differential characteristics for few rounds of the cipher. So what we aim to do in this work is to somehow exploit uh, these uh, well-known uh, techniques to take advantage of po uh, positive uh, properties and then overcome the limitations such, such that it can be applicable on LoMC. So let me first give an overview of the technique, of our technique. We divide the cipher into three uh, parts, uh, namely R1, R2, and R3. And for the first part of the cipher, we aim to find the differential characteristics with input uh, delta in, such that uh, the, this uh, characteristic holds with probability one. So if we have a deterministic differential characteristic, the idea is that independent of the value of the unknown key, we can predict the uh, difference at the output of the R1 round. Uh, then we ask the oracle to provide us uh, corresponding cipher text of the plain text P and P prime, such that the difference between P and P prime is delta E. For the second and third part of the cipher, instead of looking for a differential or truncated uh, differential char characteristic with high probability, we aim to uh, find all of the reachable output differences after R2 rounds. So we compute all of the reachable, after, uh, all of the reachable uh, differences here uh, from delta R1, and uh, we save all of them in a, uh, in a list. And we do the same for the third part from the cipher text and uh, for the uh, backward direction, and we compute all of the reachable differences from here to here. And in a meet-in-the-middle approach, we can find, uh, we can compare two sets and find the common values in both sets. And if this value is unique, then it means that we could find uh, the value of the difference in the middle of the cipher, independent of the unknown key. And of course, and of course if it's a unique value, then we can uh, do the same thing for other rounds and uh, obtain all of the uh, differences, internal differences of the cipher. So let's go to the details. Uh, for the first uh, part, uh, to have deterministic uh, differential characteristic, we need, we need to have all of these boxes be passive. So uh, each, uh, each round has M S boxes. Each S box has three bits. So over all rounds, we have three multiply M, multiply R uh, filtration. So if we consider the length of the low MCP, then we expect to have two to the B minus three M R deterministic differential characteristics. So to have deterministic differential characteristics, it, it's enough to uh, consider R1 as B over three 
m approximately. Uh, for the second and the third part of the uh, method, we need to somehow estimate the number of reachable differences. We uh, compute the uh, somehow exactly reachable uh, uh, differences in our paper more precisely, but here uh, I, 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 I prefer to uh, not to go to the details, but uh, just give an overview. So if we consider only one SPOX and we fix the input difference, then the output difference of the SPOX of low MC can get at most to the two different values. And uh, if we consider all rounds of the ciphers with the assumption all of the SPOXs are active, then uh, each round has uh, M SPOXs. So if we consider all rounds, then totally we have M R SPOXs. So totally we have two to the two multiply M multiply R different values at most. Uh, so the, com the time complexity for uh, computing all of the reachable differences and uh, creating the list is to the 2MR2 for the th second part and for the third part, and of course it should be less than to the K because we want to have a cryptanalysis faster than exhaustive search. Another uh, limitation is uh, to avoid rank collision. Uh, to avoid rank collision, the number of rounds in the second and third part should be less than this value. Uh, and so, of course, we cannot uh, manage uh, this inequality because uh, it's a time complexity and we want to have a faster uh, attack than exhaustive search. But the question is how we can manage this inequality, how we can solve this problem. Because if we have more than one collision in the middle of the cipher, then it's somehow challenging. The idea is simple yet in, uh, very effective. We move from differential to polytopic. Uh, characteristic, which was uh, for the first time uh, proposed by uh, Thiersen at Eurocrypt 2014, instead of considering one difference and the, pro the propagation of one difference, we consider D differences and tuple of D differences. And similarly, we can also estimate the number of uh, D differences available and reachable in the middle of the cipher. So for one SPOX, we have at most two, one SPOX of low MC, we have at most two to the three uh, different values at the uh, output of the S box, and if we consider R rounds, each round has uh, M S boxes, so totally we have M R uh, active S boxes in the worst case. So at most we have to do the three multiply M multiply R different values for D differences. And now to avoid any wrong uh, collision, is enough to consider the dimension D larger than this value. So we can simply manage this by uh, actually increasing the dimension of the D differences. So far we have discussed uh, finding and obtaining internal differences of the, uh, over the cipher without computing the key. Now it's important to understand uh, how it affects the security of the cipher. We want to know if we know the internal differences in the middle of the cipher, can we retrieve the key uh, actually efficiently? How we can uh, compute, uh, obtain the key efficiently? So let me uh, remind the well-known uh, definition for SPOXs. Uh, we call an SPOX uh, delta uniform if for a specific input difference alpha and uh, another uh, specific output uh, difference uh, beta for all of uh, alpha and beta valuable. The number of x that satisfied in this equation would be less or equal to delta. Uh, if, uh, for example, for low MC, low MC S box is two, uh, is two to the two four uniform. Uh, and uh, so, in general, if the S box is two x uh, uniform, and if we assume that in the last rounds all of the M S boxes are active, then we have two to the M x different solutions for a given input differences and output differences of the last round. And each of them, each of this uh, solution uh, uh, leads to a specific value for the state before the uh, S-box and after the S-box, and each of them can uh, lead to a unique uh, subkey. And of course, if we use more pairs, then we can retrieve 
the last round of the key. But the key point here is that we cannot retrieve the whole subkey at the, at the end of the cipher because the, the nonlinear layer is partial. So to be able to continue this way for other subkeys, we need to uh, present this uh, equivalent representation of, AA, of uh, LOMC. So this is the structure of LOMC. And if you look at the last two operations, both of them are linear. So we can simply swap them and consider equivalent subkey instead of original subkey. And again, if you look at this key addition and this key addition, as the nonlinear layer is partial, then we can combine this part and this part together, just like this. And then again, we consider equivalent subkey for the round before the last round. And of course, we can continue this way, and finally, we have this kind of presentation, uh, re representation for uh, low MC. So if I can retrieve this value of the, uh, for the last round of the uh, cipher, then we can simply decrypt one round and again apply the method to retrieve the subkey for other rounds. These are the results of, the, uh, of our attack. For example, if you look at uh, uh, this instance, the key length is uh, 256, the number of rounds is 158. The allowable data is 16, and number of S blocks is 1, and block size is 120. And the time complexity of the attack is 2 to the 165 at most, which is uh, notably uh, faster than uh, 2 to the 256. Uh, the key point here is that uh, if in our formulation we have found that if the block size is larger than the key size, then it's better to use conventional uh, differential characteristics. It means that uh, the differences with dimension D1, like conventional difference, di differential. And uh, when the block size and key size are equal, are equal, then the dimension two is the best choice. And of course, when the block size is much smaller than the key size, then we can increase the dimension of the uh, D differences. For example, we consider D4, and then we can avoid any uh, round collision in the middle of the cipher. So all of the uh, instances uh, we, we could attack, they have the same uh, structure, same pro property, that the number of boxes in each round is uh, very limited. For example, one, five, one, five. So it's only applicable on low data instances, and also the allowable data is also very limited. So it's only applicable on low data uh, instances of low MC. But it's a very important family uh, a class of uh, low MC family of cipher because it's already used in uh, some signature, post quantum signatures, and uh, so it's a very important class of uh, low MC. So to conclude, we uh, present, uh, uh, we propose a new presentation, representation for the block cipher with partial nonlinear layer. The presentation that we uh, I just uh, introduced. It, it can be applicable on any cipher, SPN cipher with uh, non-linear uh, non layer. And we provide a new insight into the security evaluation of low MC and also block cipher with partial non-linear layer. And uh, our results uh, are the best results for some version of low MC that led to a uh, new round formula. Thank you. Thank you very much. Question? Any question? So have you tried these techniques on other partial SPN ciphers? Uh, yeah, for, so for example, if we consider Zorro, mm -hmm. then it's also applicable on Zorro or other ciphers, but um, in compared to other cipher, other cryptanalysis on Zorro, our results are not better. But uh, the point is that uh, our uh, attack uh, can uh, be applicable on Zorro and uh, independent of the linear layer. So if we change the linear layer, of course, differential and linear attack can not be applied, or at least it can be challenging to apply uh, on Zorro or similar ciphers. But our work is independent of the 
uh, linear layer and inner properties, uh, properties of the cipher. Uh, but yeah, it's not uh, like better than previous uh, well-known attack. Okay, thank but you. Naturally, it's applicable. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you. <laughs>